It's day one of the National and the energy is already high. Kids are trading all over the show floor, deals are getting done, and I want to do some deals too. But there's a problem. The show is only open four hours today. This is my chance to get a jump start before a lot more people come in. I want to get the card that I want first, and I want some vintage on-card autos. So I got to hit the show floor and go find the best one right now. So I sent my team members around the show floor and I said, find me the best booths with vintage on-card autos because I am a buyer today and I want to find the best one on the show floor. They've gone around and they've said, there's some I have to check out. So I'm going to go check out the first one right now. Rick, I know you are an expert when it comes on, to Jeff. these vintage on-card autos. I love the vintage on-card auto market. Yeah. Because they're so damn rare. And I don't know that the rest of the hobby has necessarily No, I think, I think you're right when it comes to it. And then there's also it, the people that did sign them, they never got a high grade card signed. It's nuts, the population on some of these. So tell me about the Bill Russells, first of all. So this is a 6.5 with a 10 auto. Yeah. I paid, I think, $180,000 for this. Yeah. And there's only one 7 with a 10 auto. You so. see, I would argue, and, yeah. and, and the, the sports card hobby still wouldn't agree with this right now. Yeah. But I would argue that I think. That one, or maybe the seven with the 10 auto, should be as valuable or more valuable than the most perfect condition of the card without an auto. So this is an 8.5. Right, four. you see, that this is what starts yeah. not to make sense to me. The second highest graded non-auto card, 660,000. The second highest graded auto card, Buck 80. A buck 80, less than $200,000. Yeah. And I know the hobby's been this way for a long time, right? Like people, the thought- well, when I was, I was a dealer as a little kid. Yeah. When I was a dealer as a little kid, if you got this card signed, you destroyed it. You ruined the card. The mindset has shifted quite a bit. Where yeah. now people like the autos like well, I we do. live in a world where everybody, everything is signed cards. Yeah. So they have the same expectations for the all-time greats. And if they passed away, then, you know, you're dealing with a special item. So do you think the mindset will continue to shift in favor of on-card autos given the scarcity. I think it's trending the way you're saying, but I do think that there's a difference between having the 8.5 and having the signed card in a 6.5 and then being exactly comparable. But the 6.5, which is really just a couple of edge issues and a tiny little surface issue different, yeah. was actually held by Bill Russell was actually signed by Bill Russell. And that's the thing that like yeah, gets no, me that's, as a that's collector. It, that's added value. The fact that, that yeah. they, they held the item. I mean, look, to each his own. Like every collector is going to look at this differently and to yeah. each his own. But to me, I've really, really grown an affinity for the on-card autos. Appreciate it. OK. All right, I'll be Have back. Have a good show. Look at this, guys. So much is happening. We got our Card Kids trade zone over here. We got market movers, sports card investor sets. And then the eBay vault. eBay's been making big announcements this week. They've now opened up their eBay vault for anybody to submit cards. You can send your own cards into the eBay vault and no seller fees. They've extended that through the end of the year. These are big deals, guys. Check out eBay. They've sponsored our national coverage. Check out ebay.com slash vault to find out all the info on the new eBay vault promotions. This is it. This is what we wanted. Look at all the kids. This is fantastic. Oh, this is good. Look at this. The show's only been open for a couple of hours, but the Card Kid Zone at our Sports Card Investor booth presented by eBay is already packed. This is awesome to see kids trading. I love this. This is what it's all about here at the National. I am excited now. I feel like I have to hit the show floor and find some vintage on-card autos to start to build a collection that is even a tiny bit of Rick's. I got to get at it. Brent, I heard that Mill Creek Sports had Pleasure some unbelievable autograph cards and, and that was not wrong advice. This is insane. Specialized in autograph cards, um, higher end stuff. Yeah, Ichiro. Look at all these Ken Griffey Jr. cards. So 56 Tops, Ted Williams, yeah. and oh, unbelievable. Look yeah. at Mickey Mantle, uh, yeah. all this. Uh, you know, Look at that, you got Pistol Pete here as well. That's incredible. Yeah, yep, that's his rookie card, signed rookie cards. This looks like this is the case. I mean, you're talking about all-time greats who have passed on Walter Payton right here. Right off the bat, unbelievable. Wow, look at those. You've got yeah. Mickey Mantle, you got, oh, you got all kinds of all-time greats in here. Sure, here's a 52 Tops maze right wow. here with a, with a signature that was probably done right around the time that card came out. So somebody had the foresight to get that card signed right during that, that time frame of 52 or 53. So the, the which, timing on the signature does make a difference. It, it has to us, and we've always thought that. Yeah. We've appreciated that. Even though the common collector hasn't 
caught on completely yet. We're seeing that transition now where they're starting to appreciate that, hey, this was signed during the guy's playing days. Um, same with the 52 Tops Mantle signed right here. Uh, same yeah. same thing, you know, it's, it was signed during his playing days. So Scott thought that getting cards signed was great when other dealers thought that, that it was problematic, right? Yeah. They thought that it hurt the value of the card. Well, we're finding out now that they were wrong. You know, people want the autograph on the card. So I was just talking to Rick Probstein about that. You know, yeah. I, I, I have felt now for, for a few years that vintage autographs are underappreciated and I've watched yeah. the market really right. rise on them right. recently. Do you think that trend continues to go forward? I do, I do, because there's no way of going back and getting these done, right? They were done one time and, and you know, a lot of these guys have passed on and, and there's just no way of going back and getting a vintage signature, you know, let alone a signature on yeah. some of these cards. All right, Brett, well, I appreciate you sharing this with us. This Pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks for stopping by. I don't get the philosophy that an autograph somehow like degrades the card. I recognize that's how the hobby saw things for many years, but to me, it just enhances it so much. It was held by the player. It was signed by the player. Like I want, I want that autograph on there. It creates a connection with a player that in my opinion, the card by itself is otherwise lacking. All right, guys, Eric stopped me on the show floor and he said, Jeff, I know you're looking for vintage on card autos. I've got the best one in the world. And I said, Eric, what are you talking about? Eric might just be right. Eric, tell me about this incredible card. The autograph is just perfect. It really looks like the babe took time to sign it perfectly. Um, and it's just a dream card for someone like me who likes rarity, who likes a great story, and who likes um, an epic card that could transcend generations. The red on this one is particularly sharp. You're right, a lot of, the, a lot of these cards get a little faded. The red loses its vibrance. Yeah. This one looks like it rolled off the, the printer yesterday with how bright that red is. Yep. And then the auto, it's it is really a spectacular Babe Ruth auto. Is you use the right word? You said he was very careful when he signed it. And every he, letter is perfect. Every letter is perfect. Future. Would the right offer have to be in the seven figures for this card? It would definitely have to be in the seven figures. Yeah. Eric, thank you for showing this to us. Appreciate That's incredible. It. Absolutely. Right, thank you. Beautiful card. Thank you. The coolest thing about the National is you cannot do what I'm doing right now anywhere else. There is no other card show you can go to anywhere in the world that is gonna have this selection of vintage on-card autos. If you're looking for that rare, one-of-a-kind card, chances are it is here, as we're seeing today. Andy, you had a card here that I had to see when I was walking by. Tell me about this. Oh, this is a 1941 Playball DiMaggio, one of the most important cards ever made. In fact, I call this a pillar card because it's one of the cards that the industry was built on. Not only that, it's probably Joe DiMaggio's signature card. It's the one you think about when you think about Joe, exhibiting the classic swing. Uh, this particular example happens to be autographed by Joe. Very rare. Um, this is a very low population item, and I've been getting a lot of inquiries. I just put it out a couple hours ago. I'm definitely proud to have it on display here at the National. It's a, it's, you said it's his signature card, and, and I mean that's both literally and figuratively because it's got his actual signature on it. Extremely low population, as you said, and this is DiMaggio's first color card. Correct. In fact, I think it's the best looking card set made in the decade of the 1940s. Yeah. Yes. And to have to have his signature on it makes it extremely rare. Couldn't agree more. So so what's your asking price on it? 24000 on this particular example. Okay. To me, it's right in the ballpark. I think it's a very saleable card at that level. Okay. All right. I'm going to think about that one. Do you think he's got any room on it? I think I could probably knock a grand off for you. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you for showing it to me. Thank you. Awesome. All right, Rick. So I've walked around the show floor. I wasn't able to bring over, but I have a photo of it on my phone. Yeah, it's a great piece. That's the that's the Playball 41 Joe DiMaggio. Yeah, that's great. This is right around the same price as that. I'd much rather have the Joe D. Much rather have the Joe DiMaggio. Why yeah, is that? Yeah. No, this is one of the most iconic cards. It's 1941. Yeah. Yeah. It's the year of the history. 1941, yeah. So it's, you know. Yeah, okay. You give me a lot to think about. No, it's Mantle's good, it's good that stuff. That Joe DiMaggio is real interesting. Oh, the DiMaggio, I mean, 41 yeah. DiMaggio is one of the most and iconic cards. that DiMaggio, cards. if I were to cross that at PSA, that would end up being maybe like the third ever highest grade. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a solid idea. I mean, I would get out of the Beckett holder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful to talk to Rick Probstein and get him to kind of weigh the different cards that I was looking at. The other one that caught his eye, that's caught my eye as well, is that 1941 Playball Joe DiMaggio card. He also thought that that would be a strong card from an investment standpoint, and there's not many autos out there of that card. 
there's a lot less autos of that 41 Playball DiMaggio in existence. Now the ask on the DiMaggio right now is 24,000, so it's a little more. Now I need to do a little bit of research and figure out what I think the best price is and which way I wanna go. So we just added a new feature to Market Movers called our sales history feature, which allows you to search every transaction from the last three years of every sale on PWCC and on Golden and several months worth of sales on eBay as well. You can search for anything. So I just put in Joe DiMaggio Auto to see any autos of Joe DiMaggio from 1941 that have sold. And I actually have found a few of those play ball cards that have sold not too long ago. Definitely some differences here in sales prices. These top two are from 2022, so they're the ones that are most interesting. You've got one that is a PSA Authentic with an auto grade of a 10 that sold for 5,000, so that's a low comp. But then you've got one that was a PSA uh, 2.5 and this one sold for 25,000. This one definitely more supports the price of the car that I was looking at. So I'm gonna go look at both of these sales in a little more detail, see if I can figure out the difference between the two. All right, so I just clicked on the Lincoln Market Movers to look at the detailed images of that Joe DiMaggio car that sold for only around $5,000 and you can see it's got a lot of damage. That's why it sold for so little. That is not a nice looking card at all. So that is not comparable to the one that I'm looking at over there. All right, so now I just clicked on the one that sold for around 25,000 and you can see the condition of this card was definitely better, but what's interesting is it's still nowhere near as well conditioned as the one that I was looking at over there for 24,000. I think that's a special card and I think that's a really good value. And out of all the vintage on-card autos I saw today, that's the one that I think I should make a play on. All right, Andy, I'm back. Good I've been thinking back. about that Joe DiMaggio. You want to bring that back out again? Sure. Happy to show it to you. I want to take another look at it. That is, that's a special card. It is a special card. Obviously, it's been graded for, uh, for card grade at five, and it's a mint nine signature grade. Yeah. A very high assessment. So I know you're selling this for a client. I am. Asking 24. My original thought was 20,000 cash on it. Hmm. How do you think that would resonate with the client? I think that's going to be a push for us. Um, I could check my paperwork and get the exact number for you, but I think I don't think that's going to work, to be honest with okay. you. Yeah. Why don't you look and let me know what you could do? Sure. On give it. me one second. Yep. Really is beautiful. It's well conditioned. I think if you crossed it over to PSA, it would be. Uh, I think you'd do well with that. Although honestly, the five with the nine auto is pretty good. I know I quoted is. you 23,000 earlier. The best I could do is I could knock it down another $500. 225? 225. Okay. And that would be cash or check. Uh, I would take your check with proper ID or sure. a uh, Zelle payment or a PayPal payment. There would be a fee uh, with the PayPal. They charge me 3%, so I would have to tack that on. So that would raise the price back up over 23, but <laughs> but yeah, cash works if you're so inclined. So 22.5 is the best. Option. That's the rock bottom. Yeah, it's a strong card. How about 22? Thank you, Andy, appreciate it. My pleasure. Wonderful. Yes, look at that beauty. What a card to start the National with, but it's only day one.